Yo, what is good ladies and gents? This is your boy Six Master back at it again with the final part to What If Naruto Had Dark Matter Release. If you are excited to see this series come to a close, make sure to leave your comments about the favorite parts of this series so far and any ideas for future what ifs. Um, the movie to this series will actually be coming out in about two weeks to a month. I can't give you an exact date, just know it will be on a Saturday. And starting next week, we're going to start up our brand new series, What If Naruto Obtained the Curse Mark Instead of Sasuke? If you're excited for that, make sure to stay tuned. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into part 9, the finale of What If Naruto Had Dark Matter Released. Nezuko, believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot! Hey, it's me, Goku! Starting off where Six left off, Madara Uchiha arrives on one of the battlefields and basically starts manhandling the Shinobi Alliance like the goat he is as Naruto would still come in with his Odama Rasengan, however this would prove to be useless against Madara Susano. and so Naruto would once again try again, however with the Rasen Shuriken, this time drawing Madara closer to him, however Madara still has his Renegon and just absorbs the attack before grabbing Naruto by the throat and starting to absorb some of his chakra. But Naruto was sprouting to KCM2 with two chakra arms emerging from his back and smashing down on Madara's head and hitting him into one like those stone pillars that were on the battlefield. With Naruto landing back on the ground safely, although rubbing his neck in pain. But nevertheless, Madara would emerge from that attack unscathed and decides to test out more of his power by sending down a meteor on the Shinobi Alliance. As a lone with Gar stopping it with his hand, Naruto would throw a Dark Matter release Rasen Shuriken straight at the thing, which with this extra destructive force this time would be able to destroy the meteor. And Onoki still is able to deal with the second meteor. As Madara still sends that deep forest emergence, which Naruto easily takes care of. Because this time he has much more chakra available, meaning that he's able to stick in the fight much longer. As Madara decides to switch his attention more on Naruto this time, seeing him as the strongest and therefore kind of the greatest threat here. As he jumped down back on the battlefield and start dashing towards Naruto, who would do the same, sending out a few chakra hands with Rasengan's at Madara, which he would easily As die. Madara would send a majestic flame jutsu straight to Naruto, which would land a direct hit on him, then suddenly appearing in front of Naruto and saying he's finished with a chakra rod in hand, getting ready to stab him. But luckily, A would teleport out of nowhere and hit Madara away. Well, kick him away, but you get the point. As Naruto would thank A for saving him with A saying not to mention it. As Madara would question on how he didn't see A coming before having to dodge out of way of the incoming attacks from both Jiraiya and Tsunade, or Sangan in a punch respectively, he would also arrive to the battlefield, this time by foot. As Naruto would mention that he's glad to see the two before getting back up as Jiraiya would apologize for being late as Mei would also arrive too but she doesn't do much. Anyways now all five cock out here plus Jiraiya kinda ruining the theme there. That'd be great as by this point the clone will be running low on chakra actually transforming back into base suddenly. As Tsunade will tell Naruto that they've got it from here while healing Gara and the uh, suit Chikage. And I just remember his name, Onoki. Naruto at first disagrees, just asking Tsunade to heal him too, and he'll be just fine to fight. Onoki still gets his whole little speech, and Jiraiya also adds on top of that, telling Naruto that he can trust that they've got it from here, and that they'll leave him to deal with the other Madara. As Naruto would agree to this telling them when before disappearing as they would reaffirm that they will. Now on to the fight itself, not much of this first part changes. Jiraiya really doesn't have anything that can. Of course when Tsunade is not healing both Onoki and Gara, the battle would turn more into the five Kage's favor, well as much as it can against Madara. And another small change is when Madara would insult Tsunade, Jiraiya would end up defending her. 
But back to the fighting, Tsunade still goes into the 100 healings, and Jiraiya decides to go into Sage Mode. The five Kage and Jiraiya all work together to break through Madara Susano. That goes about the same way as in canon with Tsunade managing to crack through Madara Susano, proving that better than Madara expected, as Jiraiya being there this time would double down Slamming on Slamming over Sengun into Madara Susano, the cracked part, and it was slowly explained to Odama or Sengun that would fully break through and actually hit Madara outside of it. Asgard would then take his opportunity and quickly use his ceiling jutsu on Madara. I forgot the name of it, but it was a giant pyramid as Jiraiya would double down on this, attaching a few of the seals he would have gotten from the ceiling team. But it'd all be about fruitless as Madara would emerge from the pyramid in his susano and would tell the kage that playtime's over before proceeding to overwhelm them and jiraiya with the army of wood clones all using susano but then giving respect to them by finishing with them off with his perfect susano ending the battle as we quickly move over to sasuke's point of view He'd be going after the Kabuto information he would have received from Itachi as a Naruto clone would quickly catch up to them accompanying them to fight Kabuto, just in case. As they would quickly dash against Team Taka, I think they were by this point, with Karin commenting on them to wait up and see gets how commenting annoying on. this is as Naruto and Sasuke would arrive at the cave. Kabuto would begin, you know, his usual dialogue from canon, except for no real stuff about Itachi. Or then going on to his monologue about perfection. As Naruto would just hop in with the Rasengan, Kabuto would jump out of the way of landing on the cave walls. As he tell Naruto it's kind of rude to interrupt people while they're talking. Before jumping onto the ground and and showing off his new form and all the time has the sage art white rage technique being a blinding light which will blind both naruto and sasuke along with a shrieking sound that would deafen them and still charging towards sasuke however naruto with his own sensory abilities in kcm2 would stop kabuto by landing a rasengan straight to kabuto's chest with dark matter release of course which would blow him back into one of the walls of the cave as Kabuto would ask Naruto how did he know where he was going to attack as Naruto would explain that he isn't the only one with sensory abilities before Sasuke would thank him for the save. The fight would quickly resume with Naruto summoning a few shadow clones, let's say six in total, all charging with Sengans and heading straight for Kabuto as Sasuke bring out his Susano and start shooting some arrows covered in blaze released at Kabuto. As Kabuto would dodge the arrows, jumping on the cave wall once again, where he would be met by Naruto and his clones, all with the Rasengans in their hand. As he start feeling himself being pulled towards them before Kabuto would quickly use the inorganic animation jutsu to manipulate the cave around them and basically implant multiple spikes in Naruto and his clones along with wrapping around them. But luckily, Naruto would have been stabbed nowhere. Sasuke would attack Kabuto with the sword of his Susano, probably the Tosca blade, sure why not. He would quickly move out of the way, not wanting to be sealed away, as this will serve as a double purpose, also freeing Naruto. As Kurama's shocker would allow him to recover from his injuries, well the holes in his body. As Sasuke would mention that he's returned the favor before slashing at Kabuto multiple times who would be forced to jump around again as Naruto would form Kurama's head and this time would aim a biju bomb at Kabuto and waiting for the right moment then shoot and get straight at him which would result in a big explosion as Kabuto would land but with one of his arms completely gone. Naruto would say direct hit before Kabuto would just regenerate from it saying that their attacks are just meaningless before Kabuto would then begin using the powers of As it's really four. just them going back and forth for a while, not really being able to damage Kabuto, however, Kabuto would not really be able to land a decisive blow against Naruto or Sasuke either. 
as he would then resort to using Taiyuya's Genjutsu on them. This wouldn't work on Naruto since he's a perfect Jinjuriki, so... But he can't say the same for Sasuke since he would fall under this. So would have to snap Sasuke out of it and the fight just resumes. And Naruto eventually goes frustrated on well them not being able to really land a blow on Kabuto lasting one as Sasuke will reveal that he has a trick up his sleeve. Asking Naruto to give him an opening before then shooting some Amaterasu at Kabuto who would dodge. As Naruto would not in agreement before for charging another Rasengan this one being much bigger. Though Dama was saying gun in throwing it straight at Kabuto which would be coming at him slowly. But it'd also be sucking up most of the cave like a black hole as it began to pull Kabuto towards it. As Kabuto tries his best to not to get sucked in and tries using Kido Maru's web. However that is also sucked up as he is eventually sucked up himself and is pulled into the Rasengan before it then goes smaller and then enlarges in a giant explosion which would destroy the entire cave. As when the dust was settled, Kabuto is basically there looking like Perfect Cell after taking a final flash from Vegeta. Breathing heavily as Sasuke will quickly come down taking his chance and would cast Izunami on Kabuto. Which would end the fight and just place him in a perpetual loop of Naruto and Sasuke for a bit then getting hit by that Rasengan. With Sasuke telling Naruto that it worked as Naruto would notice Sasuke's eye and Sasuke goes on to explain about the Izanami and mentions that he didn't lose much. Now he can't control his blaze release anymore so not too bad of a loss. As Sasuke gets Kabuto to release the Edos and tells Naruto after that the situation's being taken care of he can basically go now. Naruto then leaving the rest of Sasuke as the clone disperse. This with Team Taco arriving and prepared to leave to go help out in the war front. However, Sasuke looks back to see Kabuto and gets a bit of an idea. But more on that later as we head into about a few minutes earlier to Naruto wrapping up his fight with Obito and his Biju. Kashi and Guy would still be there as that battle plays out pretty much the same except for Naruto already has KCM2 and, and uses his KCM avatar to take on all of them much earlier as luckily he gets the information from Son Goku on how to free all of them so he's good. As soon after the Shadow Clone memories come into Naruto as the as the Jinjuriki are sent back to the afterlife where they can once and for all rest in peace. So Obito is now forced to deal with Naruto Kakashi B and I by himself. With this fight playing out about similarly as in canon, Naruto's attacks are more powerful, but you know that power doesn't matter if he can't hit Obito so. Yeah, it's just stalling into Kakashi figures out his weakness and Naruto is able to take off his mask revealing it was Obito all along. Yes. Anyways, the girl himself decides to make his appearance once again finishing his fight with the five Kage and seeing that Obito hasn't or hasn't captured Naruto. He was just he he was trying to survive against the Ten Tails. Although little side note, Naruto's attacks does damage it more though. This doesn't change much and the battle largely remains the same until Naruto they still battle no the to moderate success as it quickly recovers and the headquarters is soon destroyed by Madara as at this point Naruto would start to run low on juice again and things aren't looking too well. The giant Biju bomb facing the Shinobi Alliance down and preparing to annihilate them all. Luckily, Minato, the GOAT, would arrive just on time, saving everyone with the flying Raijin and would appear right in front of Naruto, apologizing for being late as Naruto would tell him he's just on time actually. As the rest of the Hokage arrive, along with Sasuke and Team Tonka, as things seem to be finally going their way. We also get a short interaction between Minato and Jiraiya before the battle to suppress the Ten Tails resumes, as this part largely remains the same as in canon, as Kakashi and Obito still have their bout. 
with Obito coming back with the seal on his heart removed and now is able to become the Ten Tails in Jiraki. The Shinobi Alliance is left to deal with that with Arto also running out KCM forbidding being forced to use stage mode. However, this he seems to finds be a good thing as he is finds out Obito's weakness and is able to land multiple powerful attacks on him although these are just regenerated from but he soon is able to get KCM back and combine Sage Mo with it a little moments of teleport that not be aligned so way smart to be able to hit Obito and him and Naruto work together in their avatars to fight Obito. And the two eventually fuse together, forming a Megazord. As nine of the Konoha 12 all join in, the nine tails of the QB Susano, all this time gaining purple cloaks around them, KCM2 cloaks to be exact, along with the huge amp and power. As with their final strike, they all attack Obito, and with the help of the Shinobi Alliance, they are able to free the Jinjuriki. Of course, Naruto using Talk No Jutsu for the finishing blow, which would turn Obito back to the light. As Kakashi still emerges from the Kamui dimension to try and kill Obito, along with Sasuke, trying to kill him too, however, they are still stopped. As Black Zetsu now takes control of As Naruto, he arrives with Madara. that situation, and Madara proceeds to show the Shinobi Alliance while he's the GOAT once again. However, the Bijus come, they'll give their smackdown on Madara, at least until White Zetsu comes and offers an arm and a Renegon. As Madara summons the Ghetto Statue and deals with all of the Biju. Puts Naruto into his near death state as he would also do this to Sasuke. And the two are left on the brink of death and are left to recover. From here, Madara then becomes the Ten Tails Jinjuriki. As things happen, Naruto and Sasuke recover. This guy still ends up going into the eight gates and gives Madara a smackdown, showing why he is also one of the goats. On to Naruto and Sasuke's point of views, they do encounter Hagoromo. He tells them about they're the reincarnations of Indra and Ashura that all remains the same as the two are giving new power-ups. He gets the Sage of Six Path Sage Mode, pretty similar to Canon. For the Sage would also evolve his Sharingan into a special one, like a special Magekyo Sharingan, well, eternal Magekyo Sharingan. Can't have the Naruto go blind in one eye. Now giving him the access to other Sage Chakra to better go into Sage Mode and even Six Path Sage Mode after, you know, the rich leaves his body, so he gets to keep that. As well as throwing in a few gravity abilities from the Renegon, cause why not? So basically, he can form his own meters now, just being Chewbacca Tensei's and universal bit of my almighty push to boot. Sasuke basically gets the same stuff he did as in canon, along with now the Sage of Six Path freeing him from the Koto Matsukabe and leaving Sasuke to now truly decide if he wants to protect the village or not. No time for that as they have to worry about murder right now and so we'll wish both of them the best of luck and they be sent back to the world of the living. Naruto still comes in and saves Guy. Kicking away Madara's truth seeking or and then grabs Madara and then the ground like how Thanos did Spider Man in Infinity War before hitting him with a Rosen gun straight through the God Tree. As Madara was starting to ask, How did Naruto get so strong? And Naruto tells Madara there's more where that came from and decides to use his Rosen Nova. And it hits Madara directly, and this time cuts down the As Naruto tree. would go and leave Guy with Lee and Gara, we go out for a drink after this. As once Madara is done, he would now be faced with Naruto, this time with KCM enhancing 6 path Sage Mode and Sasuke. It would tell Madara it's time for him to return to the afterlife, and Madara telling them not to get too cocky because of their new powers. Fight falls the same beast from in canon, this time Naruto is able to see the Limbo clones instead of just sensing them. He has a bit of an easier time fighting them. He uses another one of his new moves, the magnet release for Sengun, Sasuke is Onyx Shidori, 
and they still hit Madara who would swap places with the Limbo Kong as Madara would try going for Kakashi's eye however Naruto would use the universal pull which would start to pull Madara back though he be resisting and would turn around and would give a look of frustration as he send a troop seeking orb straight to Naruto who would be forced to move his hand out of the way giving Madara enough time to free himself and go and grab Kakashi's eye and go into the comedy dimension where Madara would also would take his Renegon back as Sakura would emerge from the dimension with Naruto going to check up on her and Kakashi still healing Kakashi's eye as Sasuke would remark on how Madara got away and so they're just forced to wait until he comes back. Of course he does indeed come back and from here that fight basically goes the same as Madara is successfully able to cast the infinite Tsukiyomi. But things get worse as Black Zetsu reveals that he was actually the true puppet master the entire time, stats Madara in the back and now we have Kaguya. He quickly shift them all through dimensions into the lava world where much worth changing there as Naruto and Sasuke still come close to sealing her away but she still shifts them to the ice dimension where Naruto and Sasuke will break out along with Kaguya as Kaguya separates the two and Naruto is left to battle Kaguya alone for a while. As Naruto would have an idea during the fight of just his shadow clones being destroyed and have him use a combination of universal pull and a mighty push to throw off Kaguya's flight and movement so she kind of just left all over the place and some other Naruto clones would end up hitting her with some of their strongest attacks. Planetary Rasengan, Odama Rasengan, and the Tail Beast Rasen Shuriken, the regular Rasen Shuriken, with Dark Matter release, and a few others that names I have forgotten to mention. As Kaguya would soon get tired of this and would do start manipulating the ice dimension to her will once again and would destroy every and would destroy every clone making the glaciers turn into giant spikes which would also hit Naruto as he would be caught in between. And he start to be frozen over with Kaguya quickly approaching with her ash killing bone. But luckily Sasuke would arrive just in time to swap places Naruto with Kaguya and Naruto, and Naruto as Naruto Naruto will be Kaguya. Safe. However, she just switches dimension to the gravity one this time. Although Naruto is actually able to handle this dimension, his power is kind of being related to gravity so he's fine and is able to stop Kaguya's ash killing bone from hitting Obito saving his life. As they are once again shifted to the dimension where the Final dimension, I don't know what it was called. Kaguya, you know, is now starting to run a bit on empty now. And low, especially now since she's took in all those Rasengans. And so summons a giant truth seeking orb as Naruto and Sasuke um, we to make to sure they aren't here for their previous attempt to steal away Kaguya. Basically replacing what Kakashi would do just without the Susano. Kaguya would try attacking and getting rid of Obito as Naruto and Sasuke would get closer and closer to sealing away Kaguya as she would fly up into the air as luckily Obito would use his last coat Kamui of the fight, the Kamui Sakura above her and and she landed a powerful blow on her head allowing Naruto and Sasuke to seal her away and free the rest of the beating as well would end the fight. From here we get our goodbyes to the of the Hokage that remains the same as they all fade away in a very sad scene. But we're not done yet as Sasuke still wants to go on his whole to become Hokage thing and so decides to trap the Biju into Chibaku Tensei's. As Naruto would bring up, even after all this, he still wants to fight, and Sasuke would reaffirm even after all this, he does still want to fight. This was just a temporary alliance. As the two soon head to the valley of the end, with Kakashi and Obito basically staying out of this fight, Obito now being exhausted himself, and so now the true final battle begins. Not that different from Naruto, Naruto the Sharingan two would help to start out Sasuke small, better, and he suit. would even have a mode of using the almighty push to push him into one of the statues, the moderate one. His arm would get his chest as Sasuke, he would ask so, if that not some sense to him. 
Having a small flashback to when this originally happened as Sasuke would tell Naruto that he's still a child before Kim away with his Susano as he start shooting some arrows at Naruto which he would jump around on the water to dodge. As Naruto would form a dark matter release while Sanshiro can't shoot it straight to one of these arrows which would easily overpower the arrow and hit Sasuke Susano and Sasuke destroy it. quickly get back Sasuke out to now the ocean below as Naruto responding with with his QV avatar as the two proceed to duke it out like that for a bit. However, this time Naruto is able to overpower Sasuke and so he decides to use the Biju to reach up to him. As Naruto still makes the three-headed QB thing and this time uses dark matter release into whatever that attack was called with the two giant Rasen shurikens loaded with Biju bombs in the middle. Sasuke still uses Injura's arrow, the two attacks clash, and a massive storm, however, this time Naruto's is proven to be much stronger and hits Sasuke Susanoo. Sea comes crashing down to Naruto the ground. landing on the ground, oh, he's a little he's banged up, but he's still chakra. good enough to continue in all of his OP modes. As he proceeds to try and talk it out with Sasuke, saying that if he can return to the leaf again, everything will be just fine, things can return to how they were. Of course, Sasuke still tries to resist to the end and, and gives his chakra into one final Onyx Shidori with his release. Now his Sharingan Gun and Rinnegan gone because he's chakra to use them as Naruto easily dodges the attack before ending a final uppercut to Sasuke's chin and this would be enough to knock him out. As Naruto would emerge the winner of the fight and later Sasuke wakes up with Naruto by him as the two then just proceed to talk it out. Not that different from in canon and point it being Sasuke is back to the light too. As the final will finally be over, this time Sasuke nor Naruto losing an arm. So the two free everyone Ace from the Kikashi infinite Kikashi still become Hokage after the this, end of Naruto. Now they retiring and living the rest of her days with Jiraiya out somewhere in the village. And the two getting officially married probably sometime after this and having a child. And maybe even Tsunade gets Jiraiya to stop doing his research. Sasuke still goes on his journey of redemption that remains the same. Obito's fate is a little bit hard to decide though. Since all five nations want Obito dead, even most people in the leaves, it's uh, well he's kind of been the cause behind almost every terrible event. Of course, Kakashi would try his best to, you know, get Obito to at least not be killed and would be backed up by Naruto, of course. Sakura too, and maybe even Sasuke. But eventually, thanks to Naruto's credibility through the war, and basically them saying that without Obito, they would have all been dead, they are able to keep him alive. So he's probably on extreme probation. He's guarded 24-7, has seal sealing off his chakra and his showering gun. So basically, he's just a regular citizen at this point. At least until he can be trusted again. If he'll ever be trusted again. But Obito would thank Kakashi for it. But he's done for him. And so that basically ends off what everyone would do. Everyone still gets married to the same people they did in canon. We got an extra person in the next generation. Jirai and Tsunade's son. And you know, I'll leave his name up to you guys. Maybe it's a she. And with that... Thanks to our friend Sage, we can finally bid this series a do as it has finally come to an end. As I said at the start, if you're excited to see the full recap movie, everything will come out in due time. It will have a different thumbnail, of course, um, and it will actually be fully edited, unlike this one. Uh, there won't be any PNGs, but there will be correlating manga panels, and I do personally really like that editing style. So if you're excited for that, make sure to check it out. Uh, Curse Mark Naruto coming next week, Saturday. But yeah, um, also we just posted some new content over on the Fiction Forge. If you want to go check that out, I'll leave a card for that up in the right corner. So this has been your boy six. Have a good morning, afternoon, and evening. Peace. Until next time, nuts, we'll meet again in the virtual world where heroes ascend. Keep the flame of adventure burning bright. Until next time, nuts.
let's take flight.